Life is a gift, and it is our birthright to experience joy and happiness. But so many of us are suffering and living a life of quiet desperation. Why aren't we happy? What is it at the root cause of our suffering? What can we do when we've tried everything and nothing works? Happiness and peace and prosperity is truly God's will for us. But we suffer so much and think it's a natural part of the human condition. What is the cause of our problems? Could it be a simple thing? Could it be our thoughts and beliefs that stop us from happiness? Have we ever really suffered except in the mind? I'm Audrey Hope, and this is Real Women, and we are doing a special series called The Technology of Freedom. We welcome my special guest, Byron Katie, who is a wise teacher, a role model, who has formulated a simple process and a way that can lead to profound happiness and inner peace. Byron Katie has traveled all over the world sharing her wisdom of inner peace, and she has done it for donation. As she says, the gift of the work is priceless. Welcome, Katie. Mm -hmm. It is such a privilege to sit next to you, mm -hmm. and I thank you so much for giving us hope. Um, I like to begin, I always say, with a simple question. Um, why are we here? <laughs> I mean, what is the purpose of all of this? Oh, this is because we are. You know, can we go any further with it? Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> that's true. Um, you say that life is a joy. I th to be I lived. I would have to say also, Audrey, our, our purpose here is to simply know for ourselves that, that we are already, and you've really described it, you know, we're joy and happiness and, and happy beings, that's our nature. It's not our nature, but yet we do suffer so much. I mean, for example, like me, I always think, why am I in this place? I should be in that place. I should be in New York. Why didn't that happen? I mean, mm. it goes a circle in my head. When I yeah. wake up, I say, good morning, circle. <laughs> We're going to get out of bed now. <laughs> and the thoughts, they follow me. Uh, <laughs> so, what, why do we suffer? Well, I work with four simple questions and a turnaround. So you get up out of bed in Los Angeles, okay? And you're supposed to be in New York. Is it true? I mean, where are you? <laughs> you're here. You're here in California. Okay. So it's simply not true. You could ask yourself for the truth as you get up. So Should that's I be what in reality Los Angeles? is? No. I'm supposed to be where I am. A rose doesn't choose what bed it's going to blossom in. You is that see, what you mean when you is. say sanity doesn't suffer ever? Yes. Yes, I'm a lover of reality. I join it where I am. It's what I am, where I am. And there's nothing sweeter than that. There's nothing more successful than that. There's nothing healthier than that. There's nothing more that I would want. I'm not insane anymore. I'm supposed to be in New York, or I should be in New York. Is it true? It becomes laughter rather than frustration and confusion. Because you if I was supposed to be are. there, I would be there. Absolutely. You're yes. always in the highest place. You're always in the best place. You're always in the, the perfect setting. I mean, obviously, here we are. Argue with this. You see, that would be insane. You can't argue with reality. We try no. to argue with reality. No, but that's the, that's the suffering of it. We argue with reality, we lose. 100% of the time, we lose. It's, a, it's waging war with uh, what cannot be won. Mm -hmm. I should be in New York. Ah, oh, I should be just sitting here with you now. You see, I'm this. enjoying sitting here with you yes. now. <laughs> but this is what every breath was for of my entire life. Is It comes to this now. And it's very, very good. So in order for me not to suffer, I work with my mind. Is that what you mean by the great undoing, the great yes. untying of the knot? Exactly so. The knots, those little knots of, of places that um, keep us from experiencing this precious time that we spend with our husbands and our wives and our children and our neighbors and our communities. Mm -hmm. You see, wanting to be somewhere else, not being present here now. To be present is to be a listener and one in peace well, Katie, and gratitude. All the gratitude. great philosophers of the world 
have talked about living in the present. I mean, that's what it all tries to lead you to. Well, everyone is in the present. They may as well stop talking about it and just notice. But we use and the past <laughs> and the future. The past and the future all the time. Well, they're great theories. <laughs> they're great theories. They're great theories. <laughs> Tomorrow will be better. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the third question is, can you really know that that's true? Tomorrow will be better. Can you really know that that's true? And what do you get for holding that belief? That's the fourth question. What do you get for holding the belief? Look how you treat yourself. Look how you live when you hold the, the belief, tomorrow will be better. You see, look how you strive. Look how you effort and even shove your neighbor aside to make tomorrow better, like it's up to you or something. What I say is, tomorrow would be better, now is better. It's a turnaround. You know, the, the work is four questions and a turnaround. Four so, questions and a turnaround. Yeah, so now is better. Tomorrow will be better. How do I live when I hold that belief? It keeps me from being here now. That's the purpose. And to manipulate everyone around me and everything around me to make tomorrow better. Or I just sit in a depressed state thinking that somehow God is going to strike it better tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I could just be sitting in this depressed state again, <laughs> you see, because my mind is such a squirrel because I haven't done something as simple as investigate. And that's what the work is, this technology of inner freedom. That the technology of inner freedom, you inquire into the mind. Yes. So I come to you, I talk, tell you about my problem, and we ask, it for, we ask four questions. Yes. And they would be four questions, what would they be? Is it true? Is it true? And you get a second shot at it. Can you really know that that's true? You no, know it's true. That's the second one. Yes. <laughs> and the third one is, what do you get for holding the belief? Look how you live. Look how you treat others when you hold the belief. Well, you suffer. Yeah. And who would you be without it? Who would you be without that story in the moment? What would without I be without belief? the story? Yes, of tomorrow would be better. The story, you say that. We all have a story. It's a concept. You know, who would you be without the concept, the belief, the story? In the See, moment? I am my story. Yeah. I'm always telling yeah, my story. Yeah, without your mind, you don't <laughs> exist. <gasps> Well, say. what would I be without the story? Just yes. be free. Yes, you'd be free. And you'd be in a position to notice your surroundings and where you are. And without the story of, I should be in New York, or tomorrow would be a better day. Without the story, this is the better day, and this is better than New York could ever be. Because when you get to New York, because you haven't healed that story and concept, you think you're better off in L.A. You see, it's the, it's the concept that we're attached to, not a city and not a tomorrow. It's the story arising in the moment that we have not met with just some simple understanding. We've been told to, to meet people with understanding. Well, meet the concept, the story arising within you with some understanding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, begin there. And when you can do that, there is no story outside of you by any neighbor or any church or any a uh, husband or child or parent or spouse that you cannot meet with understanding because you've met it first within yourself so so sweetly so it would be I should be in New York and talking to oneself you know is is it's okay you know <laughs> nothing to lose you're already insane so it could just I'm out be, of my mind yeah <laughs> yeah so it could be sweetheart <laughs> is it really true is it really true that it would be better in New York. Can you really know that? And look how you. And I'm always grasping it. Then you're always grasping at other yeah. things, and you're never really happy. Yeah, and you. I mean, what is Los happiness, Angeles. Katie? What is happiness really? It's a natural state. It's an. It's a joining. It's a union. It's an. It's an. Um, it's a melding into as everything, unlimited and infinite. And these just sound like silly words, and it's as close to my experience as I can describe. It, it's like being as you, inside of you, one with you. Your smile is my smile. Your joy is my joy. And you're my life. I mean, you're my only mirror. 
You see, I can't see you are my, my face. mirror. I can't see me. You're my you, mirror. I can see. Yes. Everyone is the mirror then. Everything. Everything is Everyone, the mirror. Yes. So if I tell you, like for example, mm -hmm. someone's disturbing me, that really is a reflection of myself. Yes. And I that's see. what needs to be yeah. healed. Yes. If you tell me someone's disturbing you, I can see that you are disturbing you, and then I'm available to sit with you if you think it would serve, and and me, you meaning anyone. And we come to see just what is it? What button does that person push that you find unacceptable? Yes. And then we find it within you, and we hit a place that is so recognizable. It's your nature. There's a freedom there on the other side of misinterpretation that is unspeakable. And the misinterpretation, misinterpretation is the, yeah, that's Because the, we're always interpreting yes. through our own thought process. Yes. And I mean, I may hear you a certain way. If I don't have confidence, I may say, oh, you really don't like me. That's why you said that. Yeah. And that's really me. Yeah. So with everything, you know, if I, if I had the thought, you really don't like me, I would just say, sweetheart, is it true? Can you really know she doesn't <laughs> like you? And look, look what happened when you held that belief. You know, I separate. I immediately separate. And that concept, she doesn't like me, is how I keep from being intimate with you as mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So who would I be without it? And I'm you again. I'm merged again. I'm a listener again. I'm understanding again. I'm in a state of gratitude again. No longer separate. So we really don't listen to each other. That's well, we listen to the story, the unhealed story arising. Mm -hmm. And without that story, I can hear you. Without a story, I can hear you. You know, a listener doesn't have a story. They're just present.